Getting shredded and reaching a low body fat can be extremely difficult and challenging, but these three habits that I built made the process a lot easier than it would have been. If you're anything like me, you know, you've been at very high levels of body fat and found that it could be extremely difficult to get lean. That's me. I had a high body fat my entire life and my biggest struggle was getting lean, not building muscle, not getting athletic, just losing the body fat. And even when I did kind of get the ball rolling and I was dieting, every day felt difficult and I felt like I was always on the verge of cheating on the diet and just throwing in the towel, going back to being a fat boy. Then I decided, you know what would make this a lot easier? putting a system in place. So I systemized the process of cutting and I adopted three habits, which I built over time that made the process of losing body fat much smoother for myself. And I'm going to share them with you today. When we try to lose body fat and get leaner, especially below what our genetic body fat set point is, our body will naturally try to fight back and make it more difficult for us. This will cause us to start to crave really weird things, have massive binging episodes where we eat a crap ton of food and then try to make up for it after by starving ourselves. If this sounds anything like you or what you've done in the past, I would watch till the end of the video. The best way to avoid this repetitive cycle from consistently happening every time you try to lose fat is to have systems in place to avoid these setbacks. So let's get into it. Habit number one, fasting intermittent fasting to be more specific now before you click off and go oh he's gonna give a generic three tips bro fast sleep and drink water just hear me out why is fasting such a big deal and why did it save me from sabotaging myself so many times the way i see fasting is it's like you're nine to five but for your body you have a designated time where you're gonna eat your meals so until that time you shouldn't even think about food and for me this was great because I like to do most of my work in the morning anyways when I wake up early and I don't want to cook eggs and make breakfast and stuff. You know, I've tried that. It's really good for bodybuilding specifically, but you could still achieve your goals with a fasting framework. And I prefer to not eat as soon as I wake up. So I'll fast the first five to six hours out of the day. As soon as I wake up, black coffee and water, get to work. Now, what are the pros and cons of this? Cons. If you really like breakfast food, you cannot eat your triple stack IHOP chocolate chip pancakes in the morning. Oh, well, the pros are you can move everything till later in the day and you get to have bigger meals because you're saving all your calories for later in the day. Another pro way more productive early in the day because you're not thinking about food, right? Your brain is in a hunt mode, fight or flight. I'm just knocking out work. I enter flow state a lot easier and I'm not tired. I have a lot more energy. So intermittent fasting is the first one. And this is fire. Even on a bulk, I still implement fasting and I just eat my bulking calories later in the day. You can still do this and get big. Habit number two, replacing processed sugar with fruit. This one's a very interesting one because processed sugar is really weird. It's like a drug. You know, the more processed sugar I have, like crumble cookie, like Snickers bars, that type of sugar, the more I have, the more I crave. I never actually feel satiated from it. I've never once eaten a chocolate bar and been like, oh, I think I'll stop here. No, nobody does that. I've literally never witnessed anyone eat, you know, half a crumble cookie. The serving size is one fourth. Nobody eats a fourth of a crumble cookie and stops. We all kill the whole cookie. And even myself recently, I have two. That's 1600 calories in one sitting. What's the deal? The more you have, the more you want. And you never feel satiated. You only overeat to the point where then you feel sick. But it's like a drug. So you do it again. So why would you replace this with natural sugar? Well, fruit has natural sugar and it doesn't give you that same effect. I've never ate so much fruit that I felt sick after, nor did I even want to. Here's a cool thing about switching processed sugar with fruit. It's hard at first, but eventually it starts to remove your cravings for the weird stuff, the ice cream, the Snickers bar, the crumble cookie. It takes a while. Honestly, it took my body about seven days to adjust. So you have to have some discipline at first. Instead of eating a real dessert, you're gonna say, I'm just gonna have some fruit for dessert. I like to freeze my fruit because honestly, it makes it a lot better if you have frozen grapes or frozen blueberries. It makes the texture a little bit better. But yeah, fruit for dessert will start to rewire your body and your brain to chase less pleasure after the meal. You won't always feel like you have to have a slice of cheesecake after your food. I know a lot of people like this. I used to be like this myself. So what happens after you start to eat more fruit? Naturally, you stop craving so much sugar. Even during the day, you'll see like a billboard for a cheesecake, an Oreo cheesecake, and you won't think, oh my God, I have to go get an Oreo shake from Jack in the Box now. You'll just brush it off. 
over time, you start actually getting satiated and you stop craving as much sugar. This is a super good hack, especially if you're more prone to eating sugar and binging on it like I am. Cravings will reduce and I literally went from craving cookies and such like that every day to maybe once a week on like a Sunday, I'll get a craving, which is a lot better. That's seven times better if you think about it. So switch out processed sugar with natural sugar. This doesn't mean you can never have sugar, you know, the stuff, the really good stuff ever again, it just means you'll have it less often, which is honestly how it should be. You should have it in moderation. Habit number three, honestly, I think this one is the best one. We're going to call it the woo combo. <laughs> God, that sounds so stupid. When I said it in my head, it wasn't that stupid, but Yes, I made this up. W E W W. Okay. What is this? Water, eat, water, walk. This is the order of things you do it. So, pretty much every meal, in order to avoid wanting to binge, avoid eating too much, avoid eating a bunch of sugar, and just only having the normal sized meal I'm supposed to. It's chicken, vegetables, maybe a little bit of rice, or whatever the meal is. And to avoid going overboard and going back for seconds, water, okay, eight to 16 fluid ounces of water room temperature water. Cold water is kind of hard to chug. I chug eight to 16 ounces. If you have one of these water bottle, right? 16 ounce water bottle, half to one full water bottle. Okay. Before the meal. Now you might be thinking, bro, what, what is this? What are you trying to brainwash us with? Just give me a chance. Hear me out. Okay. Woo is a fire combo. Eight to 16 ounces of fluid water. Then you eat your meal. Okay. You can sip water during it. If you know, you don't want to choke on your food and stuff. So W E back to water another eight to 16 ounces of water after the meal and then walk you're gonna walk for at least 10 to 15 minutes right after your meal this combination water eat water walk whoo literally made me say whoa when i stood on the scale and i was shredded and i said whoa this is the most cringe thing i've ever done in a video but hear me out because honestly this is like the best habit i developed for every meal chug water eat the meal chug water again and go on a walk why is this so good? First, it ensures you're hydrated. You're gonna get enough water throughout the day without even having to dry because if you follow the structure on a daily basis, before every meal, you're never gonna get headaches from being dehydrated like most Latinas do. Anyways. <laughs> well, I don't know why I said that, bro. I'm honestly a high functioning autist. Now on top of that, the water will fill up your stomach so you're less likely to overeat. Yes, this is a real thing. Your body literally confuses hunger with thirst. Sometimes you feel like you're so mother effing hungry and if you just chug water, like give it five to ten minutes you're gonna be like wow i'm really not that hungry anymore maybe i was just thirsty on top of this it will also reduce lethargy and the tired feeling you get after eating because the water is gonna help your food digest better and you're walking right after you're not gonna go lay down and watch jujitsu kaizen and watch the new episode and just just knock out right after you're literally moving this should be something you do after every meal water and move this was a rule i did on my most recent cut and honestly it made dieting on low calories a lot better because at that point you're having smaller meals and it makes eating a smaller meal way easier water eat water walk try it for yourself before you comment some bullshit under my video bro what is this guy teaching bro science for but come on bro give it a shot source trust me bro although i said three habits i'm gonna give you guys extra give you some bonuses that didn't make the list but are still very important just because i want you to succeed that bad subscribe to the channel. The first bonus, stay off social media. Why are you looking at videos of how to make cookies at home and Oreo cheesecake slutty brownies? Like, why are you doing that to yourself? Why are you watching mukbangs when you're dieting, bro? What are you doing with your life? That is literally gonna make you crave and order DoorDash to your house or actually go out and cheat. Like you're gonna willingly stop what you're doing, get up and go cheat. No, that's like being in a relationship and staring at pictures of models. Anyways, you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> Bonus number two, stay busy because when you're in flow state, when you're locked in, whatever you're doing, you're doing this AP bio homework or I'm making the next hard style banger because my name is Yusuf Bra and I'm going to be world famous. Get into flow state. The more busy you are, the less hungry you will be. When you're in flow state, you do not get hungry. I swear it's actually insane. Three, eat at home more often. Okay. Try not to eat out if you can, because if you go out, there's a lot more options and you're already outside, you're more likely to cheat and you're gonna start making excuses like, oh, I can't really track the Chipotle bowl. You know, I might as well get sour cream and cheese on it too. Or like, ah, the habit is right there. Honestly, it's cheaper. Uh, I'll just make up for it tomorrow. No, just stop eating out as much. My most successful cuts were when 99% of the meals were made at home. And you can control your environment at home. Make it easier for yourself to succeed. You know, if there's less unhealthy stuff at your house, it's gonna become second nature. You're you're not even gonna wanna eat out, you're not even gonna wanna cheat. So just eat at home more often. Bonus number four, 
Count your calories. Do I even need to explain this one? Duh, bro. This is literally the game changer. And five, bonus five, fill your meals with vegetables. Yeah, this is overlooked. And honestly, it shouldn't be because vegetables are extremely low in calorie, but very high volume. So they're going to fill your stomach and make you more full without as many calories. And on top of that, you're literally hitting all your micronutrients for the day in these meals. Like, yeah, when did health get disregarded in the fitness industry? You should be eating vegetables with every meal, honestly. Like people that have all these vitamin deficiencies and they take 16 pills a day wonder why. It's because you haven't had a freaking piece of asparagus since the last episode of Veggie Tales you watched, bro. You know, I could go on for hours. There's a lot of tips, guys, but I hope the three habits and the five bonuses actually helped you. Leave a comment if you appreciate these tips or not, or if you hate my guts and want me to take the mask off and kill myself. So with that being said, <laughs> this is Ski Mask Duets signing out. Let's create the best version of ourselves to give to the world. All right. Peace.